A familiar scene, isn't it? The exhilaration of running free, the happiness of being with friends, the thrill of challenging yourself. Remember those days? The fond memories of competition and fun? That's what we want our children to have, the same encouraging and safe environment. Occasionally, our good intentions fall prey to the quest for victory. An Oklahoma soccer coach has been charged with second-degree battery after allegedly attacking a police officer. North Little Rock detective Michael Gibbons was working security at a championship soccer tournament at Burns Park Sunday. Youth soccer in particular has become a popular breeding ground for outbursts. As parents, we occasionally become too involved, neglecting the innocence of the game. We become overzealous, though we think we have our children's best interest at heart. Children. was released from jail Monday afternoon after he accidentally struck his wife while punching another parent during a weekend soccer game at the soccer complex. Some coaches we talked with Monday afternoon think that negative involvement by parents ruins the experience for kids. Well, you want to get your children involved, but uh, when, when you actually get physically involved and lose control, then you're taking a lot away from the game and a lot away from the kids. We forget that actions speak louder than silence or praise. Without cause, we scold the referee for a game call. Often we instruct from the sideline, even though the team has a trained coach. We want our children to have the best. We want them to succeed. We want to win. Referee intimidation has become a worldwide soccer phenomenon. Many young and inexperienced referees are turning in their whistles after being bullied, criticized or even physically abused by fans, parents, and coaches. In addition to losing referees, we inadvertently affect the players. Feelings of embarrassment and self-doubt surface with every sideline outburst heard. The environment becomes charged and competition fierce. As a parent, I'm concerned. Like the old adage says, we learn by example. With the slightest comment or action, we direct the atmosphere of the game. It's up to us as adults to take control and set a positive example. As far as parents' uh, behavior on the sidelines, a lot of times I know when 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 it usually starts with one or two parents and they just start and you know they start pacing and some of them that's just their general behavior they don't they can't sit they're anxious and so and I call that enthusiasm so thank you for your enthusiasm but they start to go and then they get boisterous and then it just. It filters down, you know, attitudes are contagious, and um, some people are not worth catching. Being critical of referees has become somewhat of a social norm. This attitude can be pinpointed as one of the many reasons youth soccer loses so many young officials each year. Change needs to be initiated. At the forefront of this movement is a much needed modification of behavior. It's very difficult when you have a tough crowd and you know, just yelling and screaming and arguing with every call. It's d difficult to keep your head in the game and it really ignore what they're saying. So every now and then you'll get a fan that you can hear them three fields down arguing with the calls. You lose your concentration if, if they're standing right behind you, especially on the line, offsides especially, it's hard enough to call as it is. but when they're sitting there yelling and screaming at you about every offsides, every close play, 
you, it, you tend, especially for younger referees, you tend to lose confidence in your game. Good job, ref! Way to screw it up! Way to screw this game up, ref! Good job! What about that one? Hey, it goes both ways, sir! Come on! Some things that parents say to child referees when they are refing, saying things like, hey, you're too young, hey, you don't belong out there, we don't think you're fast enough, you can't keep up with play. Those things can really ruin a child's psyche on the field. I mean, not only in that moment, but, you know, their next game, they think, oh, these parents didn't like me, you know, maybe they're right, maybe they, you know, maybe they have a point and I'm not going to go out there. These children need support, especially from their parents. They get the supports from their peers, they get the support from their coaches. The coaches come up after the game saying, hey, you did a good job. I think one of the, the biggest reasons why we're losing a lot of young referees in the first two or three years that, that we're referees, they're young, they're say 15, 14 years old, and they, they really, they don't know, they don't know that the parents are giving them a hard way to go and that it's just a game. That's obstruction! That's obstruction! Go to the ground, Farrah, then you'll get the call! And the parents treat it uh, as more than a game. They, they treat it, if, if we lose, it's the end of the world. And they, they, we got to remember that this is not the professionals. This is youth soccer. young referees is to uh, be polite. Pretend that's your kid. Pretend your kid's not playing. Pretend your kid's the referee. Um, they're out there trying to do something they love. They're trying to look sharp. You look at them, they're cute little uniforms, and you know, they're getting out there trying to do their best job. And you know, no one goes out and goes, I think I'll try to screw up this team today. I think I'll make some lousy calls. There's no one out there like that. That's a great shot from behind, sir. Come on, call it. You know, there's no one out there trying to cheat. They're trying to do their best job. If they blow a call, they blow a call. If they blow a couple calls, you know? Oh, come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! What needs to be said to help slow the, the process of losing the referees is, you know, for the parents, instead of saying, hey, you missed that, or, or you know, what are you watching the same guy, same game we are, or, or just not paying attention to the game, either just sit back and, and, and watch the game or encourage your players don't don't acknowledge the referees or if you have a problem say hey you know you might have missed it but that's all right you know just just get the next one positivity is is the best thing right now there's too much negativity the basis of many comments stems from a lack of education in the rules of the game calls such as offsides or a handball attract much attention while alleged dangerous plays spark enormous controversy Unfortunately, parents have a tendency to say things that are incorrect. They shout things on the field that necessarily don't go along with the rule book. They need to learn the rule book. They may know the basic rules, but I'm sure a lot of them don't know a lot of the finer points. No, I do not think the parents know enough about the rules. They, they always scream to the refs read the rule book, but I really don't think the parents know the rules. It's all played her, sir. Come on. You know these rules are taller. Don't let Red call the game for you. When my dad talks, he knows what he, pretty much what he's talking about. But when my mom talks, she pretty much doesn't know what she's talking about. I think that she needs to learn more, like, about the game before she starts yelling and talking about the game. I do not feel that parents know enough about the game because some parents haven't even played soccer before. They think they know from what they hear from us, but some people just think that they know everything and they really don't. They never actually went to all our practices and learned everything we've learned through the years we've played soccer. 
I think many problems come because parents don't know the rules of the game, especially in offsides. I'll make an offsides call and all the parents will go crazy and part of them don't even know that it's when the ball's kicked and they think just because their daughter was there that, or their team was there that they're onsides and that's how it has to be. Offsides! I don't think they really know the rules of the game. And I think if they would just learn about it or maybe if they were to go to practices, but if they were to just listen or if uh, they if like ask them about the game and the rules, I think they would really understand why and how the referee's calling all these calls. I think it would help a lot. Though many problems derive from the game itself, a common link begins outside the field. After a hectic day, adults continue to have trouble checking their emotional baggage at the door. Uh, when parents have a bad day at work or a bad day anywhere else, they definitely bring it to the game. They yell so loud and they just take it all out on, not exactly their kids, but just on their team. Wake up out there, here it comes again, let's go! Let's go, we're on offense, let's play! Oh, come on! When someone makes a bad trap or they think the ref makes a bad call, they just go crazy on them just because they had a bad day. I have ex experience of seeing parents interrelate with their kids, and I think a lot of times they get they take what either happens at home or at work. You know, they show up at the field in their tie, or you know, they've been following three kids around and trying to get into the fields, and here they sit. You know, and all of a sudden, I mean, something just happens. I'm serious. It's just like they they lose it. Come on, you gotta touch that, Justin. Come on, get to it. Time to play! Oh yeah, I think the parents br do bring like their problems of the day to a soccer game. And then, because you know, they're already stressed out. They're already mad at something. So they just get mad at someone else, something else. Like a referee or a player or a coach. They have had this bad day all day and then they want to take it out on someone. And they can either take it out on the kids, the coach, or even the referees. I'm telling you, you will be gone from this field. I guarantee it, and I'm in a position to do it. They don't believe they're doing their job right when maybe they didn't do their job right at work. They got yelled at, so they think they should get yelled at. As I was roughing in one game, a guy got really mad at for not calling a handball in a game. And I think if this guy had settled down and relaxed about this game, I think it would have been a lot easier for me to ref because I got like, I got kind of like a like afraid from that guy afterwards. Like I kind of kept refing because I didn't want to call anything bad or wrong towards him. Coaching players from the sideline proves to be one of the hottest topics on the field. Kids become confused with the onslaught of opinions and wonder, who should I listen to? My parents, coach, or the fans? I, I don't like sideline coaching, like uh, someone's dad coaching their son from the sideline. It's horrible. One of my best friends was on my team, and his dad always screamed at him to do something different than what my coach was saying, and it was horrible. He didn't know what to do, and he got really confused, and it was just a mess. Yes, I do think parents try to coach their kids from the sidelines or even the team because they think they can see the whole field so they know exactly who's open and what you're doing wrong because they're watching it from a different angle than you are. I've talked to players who say they just can't play when their parents are there because they yell so much and it just brings them down. Push up! Oh, girls, come on! Stay on it, stay on it! Why does everyone play in there? Go to the ball! It's kind of hard for myself as a referee to focus on the game when you got parents going back and forth against each other and then yelling at their kids especially when they do have a qualified coach that's teaching them one way and their parents are telling them to do another way it's very difficult sometimes get there keep it outside keep it outside here pressure Johnny pressure keep it outside that target target as a player, when parents try to coach me on the field, 
um, we are only supposed to listen to our coach. You know, our coach tells us not to listen to our parents, and, and they just want you to do what they think is best, and you have to play as a team and all together. And if, you're, if each girl is listening to her parents, then it's just not going to work out very well, and everything's just going to go downhill. And as a ref, um, I can't stand when parents are on the side trying to teach their daughter what to do. They have a coach for that, and they just need to listen to their coach. If growing pains are not enough to make a youngster feel out of place, embarrassment can feel like the end of their world. Humiliation can turn the most focused player into a disoriented child. Get him off, fam! Come on! Why don't you call that whistle? Those are the kids' parents out there, and if they're yelling and screaming, the kids get embarrassed about it, and I've had players turn around and, you know, Dad, would you just shut up, please? Well, you screw up the game! I have been embarrassed once by my mom when I was about 10 or 11. I was on this team that I didn't get a lot of playing time because they had their favorites. And my mom, after the game, went and yet, like cussed out the coach, and it was really bad. But And I felt really dumb because I really didn't have anything to do with it, and my mom took over. Have I ever been embarrassed from a parent on the sideline? Oh, yes, I have, from my mom. <laughs> she keeps yelling out stuff, and most of the time, she doesn't even know what she's talking about. So I just try to block that out of my mind when she's yelling it. But when my dad yells something, it's like just hustle Jordan or keep running or dig or something. I can listen to that, and I'll take I'll take that, but I won't take in what my mom says because it just distracts me. Sometimes my dad can get pretty loud at like a call or so. That's the same guy. Oh, that's the same guy. Come on. Talk to him again. Talk to him three times. Him. He wasn't going for the ball at all. I try not to think about it, and then when I'm when I keep running down the field, and then I hear like the rough whistle, and then I figured that he got my dad in trouble. But if he finds a couple calls that he doesn't think it's right, he'll start yelling and the, I think it stops the game. And sometimes it embarrasses me, like knowing that's my dad out there. Clearly, a parent can influence their child's mindset. In an already chaotic game, players are on the defense, ready for battle. With a simple gesture or word, adults can fuel the fire, adding intensity. It's a little bit different when you hear your dad. You